So it is the end of the weekend. I've decided to go home a day early. It's been a fantastic couple of days riding down here through Germany, enjoying the festival today at Garmisch. Uh, you can see people are starting to head out now. We've got rain rolling in. There's going to be a lot of rain rolling in. So I've decided to go home a day early because I just couldn't face doing that ride home in, uh, in one hit. So I'm going to go home early because I've got to be home Monday. So I'm going to leave now and uh, break the trip up into an extra overnight stop. So I'm stopping off, uh, I think, Strasbourg. I can't remember. It might not be Strasbourg. It sounds a bit like Strasbourg. It's about halfway, so I bang out some miles. It's going to take about five hours, according to the sat-nav. I should be in 488 kilometres, should be in at half nine tonight. So I have a nice relaxing early night there, and I'll set off early tomorrow morning. And depending on the weather, I may take a twistier route home rather than just sitting on the uh, motorway so it all plays on weather but uh, we're going to have fun on the XR on the way home so if you're interested in uh, seeing my little jaunt home on the XR settle down get yourself a coffee and let's see what this bike is like for a proper touring machine drop C and roll it it's an absolute poon machine this thing <laughs> <laughs> okay, see ya. Bit of autobahn action. Ah, go on, little one then. <laughs> Good of you. There's some snow up there. There's still a little bit of snow left. It's a ski resort, Garmisch. It's basically a ski resort. You can see all the ski lifts and everything here. It would have been great. I don't know why these ski resorts don't have the ski lifts working in the summer, because it'd been great to have gone up the ski lift and had a look around at the top of the mountain. It would have been amazing. But uh, yeah, all shut down, of course. Maybe they just open them on certain days. I don't know. But yeah, so, you know, the scenery around here in the Alps is just absolutely incredible and it's been such a brilliant couple of days and i hope you've watched the series of videos i'll link them at the top if you haven't seen them but uh this is what i've been dreading it's just sort of been the thought of having to do the whole trip back on the sunday has been sort of in the back of my mind because i knew the trip down we did thursday you know to baden baden that, that was hard, that was hard. And then the trip from Baden-Baden to, to Garmisch to here, now that took about six hours and my bum was very sore when I arrived. I thought, Christ, I've got to double that. I've got to double those together on the way home. How am I ever going to do it? And that's when we were swapping between the GS and this, so swapping between bikes. It's going to be on this constantly for that whole trip. So I knew I, I knew my bum couldn't take it. So I've, I've missed all the festivities tonight. I mean, last night was just so much beer and karaoke and it was a fantastic evening last night. I think one of the best evenings I've ever had on like a biking trip. The BMW sat there seems to work relatively oh. The GS is the ultimate mile muncher. But then when you get to the twisty stuff, this is better. So, you know, you sacrifice a little bit of that long distance comfort by having this bike because you're a bit more locked in, the seat's not as well padded. It's got a bit more room on the GS, certainly if you're a bigger guy. But when you get to your twisties, then uh, this is this is amazing. And what we're going to be doing, we will be doing a comparison with this bike and my GX. And maybe the Tracer as well, if I can get hold of a Tracer. Look at the river there, that's stunning, isn't it? There's a lot of people in shorts and t-shirts riding. I know it's hot. It seems to be the accepted thing here, you know? It's sort of... A, I'd say there's at least 30% of the people, riders, just in t-shirts and shorts. I saw one go flip-flops. I mean, whether they're not, you know, they've just come up the road from their house, you know, whether they've ridden 100 miles in flip-flops and shorts, probably not. Well, I'd like to think so. But it seems, you know, people do just don't wear the kit here. And then everyone else, you know, is, is in proper gear. It's, like no, it's almost like no in-between. And I've not seen anyone in, like, knocks summer gear you know like vented gear it seems to be you know textile suits or short or more people that t-shirts and shorts you're either in a full textile suit or you're in t-shirts and shorts there's no in between there's no other sort of riding kit where's your summer Knox gear people <laughs> can 
that cloud rolling in over the mountain. Literally rolling in over the mountain. Look at the clouds coming in and the temperature's dropped to 19 degrees. It's going to rain. Yes, we're going to finally get to test the rocket kit out. just realised that the uh, mic wasn't connecting so I don't think you heard any of my ramblings there. <laughs> my screen flew off on the auto bar when I opened it up. Oh geez, it's uh, also had massive problems with my with my uh, pin lock. I've switched to the, the, the light screen now because the dark screen but there's water getting in behind the pin lock and the and the visor and I couldn't see anything so I had to pull over at this Mackey's Burger King sorry and uh, sort that out and it's been uh, yeah it's been a bit of a nightmare bit of, and I really couldn't see anything at all so sorted now hopefully and I don't know if the rain's gone now I don't know if we're going to get more rain or not but certainly dry in the rucker kit it's certainly done its job but just chatting to a German fella in there he's uh, he was also at the he was also at Garmisch and we we're just talking about it and what he thought to the new uh, GSA and he, he said like a lot of people you know when he first saw it he wasn't sure when he saw it and then when he saw it again the next day you know your brain adjusts and he sort of said yeah he's, he's starting to like it now it's like anything new I know on social media people have absolutely been slating it but the initial impression is oh well, my god what's that but you sort of get used to it you look at it the day after you think well actually you know it's, it's, it's just the way it works these things I remember when the uh, the Mark IV Escort came out. I was like, that's horrible. <laughs> then you like it in the end. It's just a quite radically different, isn't it? How far we've got to go now? 300 kilometres, 151 kilometres. I might not get any fuel yet. Let's, uh, let's uh, just carry on for now. I don't, I don't want to get fuel. I'd rather stop again in another 100k or so. I feel like I've forgotten something. My card, I need my card in there, so in case we get any toll roads. Oh, I haven't got to take my gloves off again, have I? I really hope not. Oh, have I left it somewhere? Oh, but now I'm thinking, have I left, oh God. Now I'm thinking, have I left my card somewhere? I haven't done my helmet up either. I've done my helmet, oh my God, I've got to take my gloves off again. There's too much traffic, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. See what it takes me ages to get anyway, can't you? Right, can we go now? I haven't put my earplugs in. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I'll take my helmet off again. <sighs> that bloke, that German fella's watching me all that time as well. He's like, what is this guy doing? No bad. I thought I saw it was on fire back there. I thought it was smoke. That's just cloud. I may, I may have turned you on unnecessarily. I get that a lot. I do that quite a lot to people. <laughs> Turn them on unnecessarily. Look at that. Gorgeous. 10.30 arrival estimation. And I'm going to have to stop again at least once. So it's probably going to be quarter to 11 at the earliest. And you've got to go through all the rigmarole. Of taking all your luggage up to the rim. Because I've got the top box plus the panniers, it's two trips take all that to the room, get to the room, be caught past 11, then have a shower, go to bed I suppose. Anyway, I'll turn you back in a minute because it's, uh, it's boring. See ya. I don't know if the audio is connected, but it's time to juice up. Right, take the gloves off, I've got to put those on properly. Faffing, 224.9. 224? 
And you've taken the piss. 224.9. Jesus Christ, that'll do with that. That's ridiculous. 31 euros for 40 litres. Oh, God's name's going on. How far have we got to go? 232 kilometres. I'm going to be at 20 to 11 now. It's getting, it's getting later all the time. Right, that was the most, perhaps the most expensive fuel I've ever purchased. I feel like I've forgotten something again. <laughs> Have you seen those little windscreen wipers you can get for your helmet? There's a company that's making like little windscreen wipers. And they've approached me a couple of times and said, look, you know, do you want to feature this on the channel, a little windscreen wiper for your helmet? I'm like, I'm not sure it's even necessary. And it, look, you know, it, looks, it looks ridiculous. And I'm not sure it's necessary. I think most of the problems with helmets in the rain is to do with the inside of the helmet, not, not what's on the outside. It's the pin locks steaming or moisture getting in, like I had problems I had back there. Uh, you know, the actual issues with rain on the outside of the helmet, get some of that spray stuff where it beads off really quickly if, if it's that much of a problem. It's, it's, you know, I've got quite a lot of spray there, but a little wipe of the hand and it's gone. You know, just wipe of your hand. I suppose, yeah, okay. Little windscreen wipe on your helmet. Why not? But, no, it seems, seems a bit overkill to me. Anyway, I'm off. See you in a minute. This is the dullest video I've ever made. I just had to stop. I've been trying to get the microphone working on the camera. I just couldn't. It's, it's been absolutely stunning. I've come off the autobahn. I've come down this road and the sun's been setting, the colours, the trees. I, I try and jump on and be fanning about 15 minutes trying to get the bloody mic working. So I've missed most of the speed. I've got my music on and it's just been, you know, when you've got the right music playing and you're, you're in that right. It's like I said a few days ago when I sort of set off and you're just in that moment and you take a breath and you breathe it in and it's uh, just making sure I've got everything. And it's like food for the soul doing this on a bike. It's absolutely, uh, it's absolutely incredible. It's, you know, all the traffic's gone now. And it's got, I've gone through like this mountainous, mountainous hills, whatever sort of area. And it's just been, uh, so stunning. Hopefully we'll be able to see a bit of the sunset still before we sort of lose the light completely. But it's, it's just like food for the soul. Absolute food for the soul. You know, I'm out here on my own. Don't really know where I'm going, you know, I'm just following 84 kilometres, following a sat-nav to a destination. And I don't even know really where I am at all, you know. It's just and it's, you know, it's a real getaway, isn't it? It's a real unplug from your daily life. And just, just breathe it in and enjoy the moment, you know. Oh, we've, we've missed most of the sunset now. It's, the sun's faded, but so nice. I just had to stop and uh, say a few words to you. <laughs> because it is truly... Beautiful, incredible. Look at these roads as well. It's a shame it's been raining, they're all a bit damp. They have a proper little play down here as well. I mean, I've not seen a pothole since I've arrived on the continent. You know, I've, I've not seen a pothole. It's uh, amazing. If they can do it with the roads here, why can't we do it at home? But it's like the, the low cloud, it's, it's sort of it's been like a mist. And then you've had that sort of beautiful sunset in the background and the colours of the sunset it's just like oh and the music playing oh poignant poignant is the word anyway talk to you later on that's enough of me guffing on I just had a thought what would I do if, if it broke down here well, I got a little SOS back there <laughs> I'll be pushing that that's quite a nice I never really thought I'd bother with the SOS thing. I bought one of these. 
Oh, where are we going now? What's this all about? But just suddenly thinking then, what if I break down here now, right now? That little SOS button. It's seeming quite good. Oh yeah, let's have a bit of the bend. It's a place to stop, isn't it? It's a place to stop. But break down, just like those people. Well, it is the morning after. It is uh, about quarter past seven in the morning. I've just arisen from my pit. Uh, this is the little hotel room I had last night. It's a pretty nice, pretty nice little hotel, this one. It's quite ex relatively expensive. It's 140 euros. Uh, are you going to ask me what it's called? I'm in Saarbrücken, Saarbrücken, S double A. R B R U C K E N, I think it's called. Uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. Nice. It's a good. It's, you know, it's almost like a direct route. And as I say, that route yesterday off the motorway. Ah, this is it. It's called Victor's Victor's Residence Hotel. Could be a chain. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, it's perfect. Underground parking with the bike. All you need. And I've got the French room. But I have got breakfast included, so I'm going to go and grab a bite to eat. But I only brought up one, two panniers, one clothes pannier. But my shoes are in my other pannier, so I'm a, I may have to wear my boots down with my shorts to breakfast. That's going to be a bit of a sight. Well, here we are, back at the bike. All packed up, ready to go. Look at the steed. A little fighter jet waiting for me. My little F-16 waiting to blast me home Luxembourg five country tour in a day we clue where we are this is Belgium now I think I think we're Belgium now the third country of the day and it's only 10 o'clock it's going to be quite a convoluted route I can see there's so much faffing I might, I might have to actually edit some of it out because it's just becoming embarrassing Oh, I don't know where you go, but there's a... I've not been a Range Rover. <laughs> 